Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to build out your first ever machine learning project. We're going to be taking a look at the Titanic data set on Kaggle. Now, this video is going to be well over two hours long. So feel free to pause it, take some notes and everything like that. You don't have to finish it all in one seating. But the reason why it's over two hours is I'm going to code it line by line and explain my thought process on why I coded things out, why I removed certain columns, and different things like that throughout this entire project. In fact, we're going to be covering everything from EDA to feature transformations, all the way to making pipelines, column transformers, and also six different classification models before showing you how to submit the project itself to Kaggle and working with their data, because it's a little bit different than things uh, that I've done on the past. Now, as a bonus too, I have a full playlist of scikit-learn videos. About 99% of the code that I go over is covered in this playlist. So if you don't understand something, I have a video covering the subject, which goes even more in depth. So don't make that stop you uh, from completing this video. Promise you though, once you do finish this project, you're gonna learn so much more. And one other thing before we code, feel free to expand upon what I have done. Obviously did some initial analysis and built out this project and got an, a pretty good score. I'm mean, around 2000 out of 15,000 uh, submissions. And I know I can improve it a little bit more, I'm going to be doing a part two where I talk about different improvements that I made to my model. But if you did make a better model, leave some comments down below in the description and I would love to take a look at them. And that way I can make that part two video and even shout you out in there. Anyways, I hope you guys do enjoy. And if you do, make sure to subscribe to the channel because this takes a ton of effort to make. All right, let's start coding. Okay, so let's get started. I have this link over here, Kaggle slash competitions slash Titanic. Now this is technically a competition, but it's an infinite competition. In fact, it's never gonna end. This is a great way to get your feet wet with the data science project. Now Kaggle does have a ton of projects that are limited timeframes and you can actually build out teams specifically for those. Um, and you can check it both on the website and also on their official discord. Um, but again, go over here first, right? And let's start learning a little bit about the project, right? So it's overview. This competition runs indefinitely with a rolling leaderboard. So first it gives you a little bit of a description, right? This is a legendary Titanic ML project. The first challenge for you to dive into ML competitions, right? They have the Discord link over there, which I do recommend joining. I did join it myself, right? Machine learning model that predicts which passengers survived the Titanic. And they do have a few different walkthrough videos. And I did watch a few of these and I learned a little bit before I did start building out uh, my first initial notebook. So here is the challenge, right? Let's read over the brief, which I'd really recommend with any type of machine learning uh, project that you work on. You want to get as much details as possible before you start coding. Um, it even applies with like data analytics or your full time job. Make sure that you have everything documented and ready to go before you start coding. It's so important, right? Strategizing. It says the sinking of the Titanic is one of the most famous uh, shipwrecks in history, right? 1912, RMS Titanic sank, right? Unfortunately, resulting in the death out of 1502 of the 22 to four passengers and crew. While there's some element of luck in surviving, it seems like groups were more likely to survive than others. In this challenge, you'll be uh, asked to build a predictive model to answer this question, what sorts of people were most likely to survive? So, okay. Our challenge is to predict if someone is going to survive or not. So your first initial thought, right, is zero or one, right? Zero did not survive, one did survive. So this goes into a classifier problem. You're gonna have to think about like what machine learning model are you gonna apply for this? Uh, so that way you can see if this is gonna work or not. And I'll, again, I'll show you six that I'm gonna be using within my Kaggle notebooks. And I'm gonna have all those covered also in my machine learning uh, videos on this YouTube channel. So that way, when we build up this notebook, I have videos for each of these and you can kind of watch how those algorithms work and then also apply them in this video. And that's my goal. Everything that I'm doing within this Titanic project, I want to have a full video dedicated towards it. And right now I have about like 95% of that there. There's a few other one-off videos I have to make. Um, but if you watch all my other stuff in my scikit learn video playlist, you should be ready to go for this Titanic project. Okay. So let's continue using passenger data, name, age, gender, economic class, whatever. Okay, highly recommend tutorial. Alexis Cook, Titanic tutorial walks you through making very first submission step-by-step step in the starter notebook that you started. I actually did not check those out. I probably should have, but oh well, right? Overview of how Kaggle competitions work, right? Join the competition, which you have to do over here. 
go to get the work, download the data, build the models. Again, I'll show you how all this works. Make a submission. I'll show you how that works as well. Check the leaderboard, right? And improve your score. So one thing I will not be covering in this video is improving my score. I actually am going to make a part two. So essentially in this video, I'm going to build out my first model. I'm going to make my submissions and then I'm going to give myself like a week or so to improve my model. And we'll talk about the different improvements I made in the second video in this series. Um, I'm making this literally pr pretty much the day after I finished my first version of this. And I'll show you also where I stack on the leaderboard. So that way you guys can see how that works. Okay. Kaggle lingo video, right? Now with, with Kaggle, you're going to have two different CSVs. You're going to have train and also test, which is a little bit different than some of the stuff I've done on the channel before. Essentially, what we're going to do is make predictions off this test CSV, and then we're going to submit it and it'll tell us our score. It's a little bit different than everything else I've done, but uh, it's not too bad once you get a hang of it, right? So using the patterns you find in train CSV, predict whether the other 418 passengers aboard found TS test, right? Survive, check data tab to explore the further sets, uh, the data sets even farther. It tells you about how to submit your predictions, which again, I will show you how to do that right? Upload CSV, put that there. Submission file format, right? Don't worry about it too much. Passenger ID and survived. Again, I will be covering that, how to get started in the last word, right? And then you can join the competition. Make sure you do have a CAD goal account over here. And now let's talk about our evaluation. So goal is a predictive survive, right? Classifier, like I said, percentage of passengers that you predict correctly, right? Known as accuracy. So that's all we care about applying our model to this test set and determine like survived or not. Again, file format, right? And then we have an FAQ over here. I'm not going to go through the FAQ, right? Uh, but I am going to go through this data. Okay, so now we're on our data tab over here. So it talks about the training and also the testing data, right? Train to build your model, test to see how the model works on unseen data. Should be super familiar with it. I did not use this gender submission CSV. I said a prediction to assume all only female ma passengers survive an example of data submission should look like, right? Then we have a data dictionary over here. And actually this is pretty helpful because you might not know what all the columns specifically mean when you first take a look at a data set and um, they put it all over here, which is really nice, right? So first survival, right? Zero did not survive. One did survive. Then you have your ticket class, right? First class, second class, or third class. You have the sex, right? Male or female, age, SIB, SP, number of siblings or spouses, parch number of parents or children, ticket number, fare, cabin, and then embarked, which has the three different types of embarkments uh, where the Titanic came out of, okay? Variable notes, right? One, upper, middle, lower class, age, right? A little bit more detail on it, okay? Details about the file, right? Which we'll be going over that a little bit more. Okay, then you also have over here discussions of people will talk about it over here, right? About the project itself. I'm not going to go over it too much in this video. And then you have your leaderboard. So just to show you where I'm at, I actually wanted to test one more submission and it wasn't the best. Um, but my best one overall was like, I think 0 0.78. And we can take a look at my leaderboard position, right? So 0 0.78229. And I submitted that yesterday, your best entry, right? Here's my recent one, which was not an improvement on previous score. So again, I'm going to try to work on this a little bit and try to get this to 0 0.8, but that will be another video. I think there is like marginal benefits of it, to be honest with you. But with that in mind, let's start this project. Now I'm just going to go over here and create and click new notebook. And we're going to go over here, right? And this is just your normal Kaggle notebook that you get in the beginning. I'm just going to cut this out over here because I don't need it. The first thing that we need to do is add in our data. So I'm just going to click this plus icon over here, right? And then you can search keyword or URL. And they also have competition data sets over here too, right? So again, talking about the different competitions that are all out there. Now I'm just going to search Titanic, right? Ongoing 14,000 teams. If you click this plus, right, it says add data source Titanic. Now, should be in here. I'm going to click an X on this data. And then you can see we have the input over here, right? And it says Titanic, the gender submission, test, CSV, and then also train. And you also have your output folder over here. And this is where you're going to have your final output on uh, the CSVs to upload. 
So with that being said, let's start coding. Now, the first thing that I like doing is importing in different libraries. And I'm also gonna mention real quick on this notebook as a code, I'm not gonna leave a bunch of notes. In my final notebook that I'm gonna share with you guys, I do plan on like documenting everything, but we're gonna be doing this kind of live as coding. So I'm not gonna leave all that documentation on here just because it's gonna take a little bit of extra time. And if you do wanna see that in future videos, just let me know. I just feel like you guys would rather see the code. So the first thing I'm gonna do is import in quite a lot of dependencies on here. And uh, we're gonna start with importing pandas, which is super easy, right? Import numpy, both things you should be pretty familiar with. Uh, pandas more than even numpy, to be honest with you. Uh, we're gonna import in Seaborn, which I have a full video on that. And actually, before I forget, I need to put as PD for this and as NP for that one. I do apologize, it is early. It's like 5.30 in the morning. I gotta get this recorded before work starts for the day. Um, we're gonna import in matplot.pyplot as plt, right? And we're also gonna do this line just to keep this in line. So matplot lib in line, okay? Now we're gonna do some pre-processing. So from sklearn.preprocessing import ordinal encoder and then also one pot encoder from sklearn.impute import simple computer that's going to help with some of our missing data from sklearn.compose import make Column transformer. They'll help with our pipelines, which will be next, right? From SK Learn. The pipeline imports pipeline. Also, make pipeline. I'll show you how to use both of those on here. Pipelines get a little confusing, I'm not going to lie. But once you get used to them, not too bad. Linear model import logistic regression from SK Learn dot SVM imports SVC from SK Learn ensemble imports random forest classifier from sklearn dot tree import decision tree classifier from sklearn dot neighbors import k neighbors classifier so I've covered all those. The only one I haven't covered on this YouTube channel yet is Gaussian over here, SK Learn, and it's a naive bias. Learn dot naive bias. And I'll have a video out eventually on this one. So I do apologize for that one not being out yet, but I'm just a little bit behind because I spent a little bit more time on this video. And then we're going to import a few things over here for model selection. Uh, so cross val score. I do have that on the channel. Stratified K fold. K fold. Train test split. And lastly, grid search CV. Hope we don't have any typos on that. You don't want to like type this out word for word, you can copy my stuff in my Kaggle notebook. I don't mind. Okay. And then all you have to do is press this play button over here on the side for it to run that specific cell. And then you can just click plus code down below. It'll take a second and um, we can start cutting out our other stuff. And actually I do have an error. I do on here. And it's matplotlib, not matplot. 
it should work and it works perfect. Okay, great. And I will tell you, I'm gonna have probably a lot of code errors. So stay with me on those. I'm not perfect typing everything out. So the next thing we're gonna do is import in both our train and also our test. So I'll show you how to do this too, right? So train EF equals PD dot read CSV like this. And then we're gonna put our link in here and I'll show you how to grab that link in a second. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with test. I'm just gonna copy this over here and I'm gonna put test like this. And we're gonna have to do a lot of changes to both of these data sets. Again, I will show you how to do that, but don't worry too much about it. Now for our input on here, we have to grab the CSV location. The easiest way to do that, to be honest with you, is if you go over here to input, you see how it says like gender submission test train. So you go over here and it says copy file path. So copy that, right? Go over here to train and it says slash Kaggle slash input Titanic slash train, right? Do the same thing with test. I find that the easiest rather than remembering how to code this out specifically, right? Slash Kaggle input, like you forget that. Just go over here, copy the input, paste that in and look, you're done, right? Boom, have that over here. Okay, next thing I always take a look at first is just the head on here. So we can just put like this, right? Train DF dot head. And I just kind of want to see how this looks. And I know we technically went over this a little bit earlier on the data side of things, but that's my perspective, right? So we can see our passenger, survive, P class, name, sex, age, SIP, SP, parch, ticket, fare, cabin, and also embark. And guess what? We already have our null values in cabin. So that means we have some work to do, right? Next thing we're going to do too is take a look at dot info. So again, just copy train DF, just put dot info over here. Right, we're exploring the data first before we do anything in particular. And we can take a look at all this stuff. So uh, first thing that you know is obviously these objects, we're gonna have to do something about it because we can't run this in a machine learning model, right? So like name, sex, like, is this stuff gonna be important? I absolutely for the sex, name, well, there's stuff we can grab from it. So I don't wanna drop that specifically yet. Well, let's go through these all in total, right? So first we have the passenger ID. I don't think we need that for our machine learning model, right? Because in the, the day, I think this is just how this data set labeled each of the different passengers. So there shouldn't be anything survived. Absolutely, we'll need to do this uh, just to, for some training. Our P class, absolutely, right? There was a lot of things about class and people with the higher class ended up surviving the Titanic. Now again, name, there's stuff we can extract from it. so. We'll talk about this a little bit later in the video, um, but the name does give you some interesting information, uh, specifically like what type of class someone is in, right? If they're high class or not, some of their occupations, male or female, married, not married. Uh, so we'll go into that in a bit, right? Then we also have our age, which I think should be important too. It's interesting though, we do have null values with age. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to fix that. Now I did import simple computer. There's a few other ways to do that too. So I will be going over that. Then we have sib sp and then also parch, which again, those are just two different numbers, uh, but that also gives you your family size. So we could take a look at how that could work. Then we have our ticket over here. So we have some interesting information on this side of things. Maybe we can extract uh, some data from there. We'll take a look at that. Then we have our fare again with class, believe we should get some really good information there. Cabin, which has a ton of null values. And we'll have to decide if we're going to drop cabin or take a look at it from another perspective. I'm going to look at it from another perspective a little bit later on the code, uh, but we'll talk about that. And we also have embarked and there's only two null values there. So uh, again, that should be pretty easy to clean up. Next thing we're going to do is take a look at dot describe. So put that in here like this, describe. And this is gonna give you even more information about some of the numeric columns in here, right? So passenger, survive, P class, age, sib, parch, and fare. Do you have mean, your standard deviation, min, and all the way up through max? So you can take a look at that perspective, right? Uh, so mean 38% over here for survival, right? Age, the average age was 30 for the Titanic, which in my perspective, I thought that actually sounds pretty young. I would have kind of expected a little bit older, but that is over there, right? So I don't know what 32 is with modern USD. If you want to 
do that calculation or just Google search it. Let me know down below in the description. And I do enjoy any feedback on this project as well. And if you do learn something, let me know below in the comment section. Uh, this video is going to take quite a while to make. Uh, so it definitely does help with the video. And so does subscribing to the channel. I upload uh, three data science videos every single week. Well, not this week because I built out this full project, but uh, normally I do. All right, so now I'm going to take a look at uh, some information with categorical data. And I actually didn't know how to do this until I researched a little bit more on it. Uh, but we can just put include and then equals. And inside over here, we're going to put a capital O like this. Check this out. This is pretty cool, right? So the counts for each of these, which I guess technically you already get over here in info. Then unique over here, right? Unique values, which it's kind of helpful, right? 681 different unique tickets, uh, which tells you, right? There's some people that are gonna have the same exact ticket. So maybe that will be uh, something we can take a look at within our model. Cabin two, right? Um, There's only 204 of these, but 147 are unique. So multiple people have the same cabin, right? Embark three, which we've already talked about. Uh, frequency 644, the most common with S on here. Right, male 577. Uh, so there's definitely a lot more males in this data set. And um, again, stuff we could take a look at a little bit later. So now I want to do some group buys and take a look at specifically how that impacts the specific um, survival rate. So we can do that. And I'm going to build out a lot more of these code cells just because we're going to do a lot of different group buys. So let's start off with P class because I think that's the one that's going to have the biggest impact. Uh, either P class or also sex. So we could take a look at that pretty easily. So train dot df dot group by right, and then first thing we're going to do on here is mention uh, what we're being grouping by. So we're grouping by P class. So P class like this. And then I'm going to put over here as index equals false. And that way we can have a nice data frame over here. Then I'm gonna put survived like that because we would like to see how that's working. And I'm gonna put the mean. And I'm gonna copy this code quite a lot for some of the other stuff, but we're again, we're just taking a look at how this works within our data. So, okay, so our P class, we have first class over here, right? 62% survived. Then we have our second class, which is 47. Again, higher than that average, right? Our average over here was 0 0.38. So if you're in this first or second class, you have a higher chance of surviving. And then our third class, which is our lowest tier, is 0 0.24. So already some good information over here. Next, I wanna take a look at the sex. So instead of P class over here, all we're gonna do is change this into sex. Again, we can run this over here. And you can see 74% of females survived and only 18% of males survived. Now let's take a look at the SIB SP. So again, we can just put this over here and see if we see some information. So SIB SP, we run this. So 34, no one on the ship, um, which is a little bit lower than the mean. We see one is 53, 46, uh, so one or two look like they've survived, right? Two, five, one, six, and then zero, and also zero. So that's kind of interesting, right? And then I'm just gonna throw a parch over here. So they're very similar. And this one, three, four, again, lower on that side of things. Five, 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 six, and then 0 0.2, and also zero. So, okay. Um, it's interesting. Uh, one thing I was thinking about is like building out something on the family size side of things. And essentially what that would be is adding both SIBS SP and then also Parch and then plus yourself uh, to see the size of your family on the Titanic. So the way we can do this is train DF. We can put something called family size like this. And then we're going to say that's equal to train df. And you can put this sib sp in here like this, right? And you can do plus, same thing again, right? Train df. 
and then this time we'll put in parch and then plus one for yourself. And what I'm going to do also is any changes to terrain, I'm going to put also in test, right? So we're going to just put test over here like this. So we have train DF and also our test DF, and that's going to build out a brand new column. So I run that, right? We have no errors. And just to show you that this worked, right? I'm just going to put train DF. We'll put head and we'll put 10 in here. Just to show you now, we have family size here at the end. Now, I'm not going to build out a data frame every time we make a change like this, just to show you guys, but um, we're going to do our group by now. So we're going to group by over here and we're gonna throw our family size in here. And now we can take a look how adding both of these, right? So if we have only one person, yourself, you have 0 0.3. So we're a little bit below the mean uh, for survival. But what I find is interesting is like, if you look at two, three, four, like you have a few different family members, you have a lot higher survival rate, right? So like one, two or three extra people in your family, good survival, but like once you, get a little bit higher, five, six, seven, eight, and also all the way to 11, your chances of survival are not that good. Um, so I just kind of find that a little bit interesting on that side of things. Another thing that I saw, I actually saw this in another a notebook and I thought it was actually pretty cool to use. So I am going to put this down below is grouping by family size and you can get a little bit more data and perspective on that. So all we're going to do is pretty much build out a dictionary. We'll put family map equals. Again, this is not my code. I actually saw this and I definitely liked it a lot. So we'll put alone like this. Two, we'll put small. Three, we'll put small as well. Four, we'll also put small. Five is gonna be medium. Six is gonna also be medium. Seven is gonna be large. Eight is also going to be large. And 11 is also going to be large. And I know we're taking something that was numeric and we're making it categorical, but we can change this back a little bit later, especially when we run our pipelines. But I will put that there. And then also we're going to make some changes to train and test again. So train. DF, and I'll just put like family size group, family size group like this equals, we'll put train DF in here again, put over here, family size, and then you map it into this dictionary map, and then you put over here family map. Again, I will do the same thing this time for our test DF, right? Throw a test in here like this. And then, boom, now we should have that within our data frame. And now we can group by it. So I'm gonna put over here, group by. And you can put this. So you can see alone, 0 0.3, large, 0 0.16, medium, 0 0.16. Uh, but if you do have a small family, you survive a lot. And that is a benefit of looking at other notebooks. Now this is like an open competition. So all of them are published or at least a lot of the notebooks are published and you can take a look at what other people do. I wouldn't have thought of grouping the by the family size. I would have just kept it like this, throwing it into the model. Um, but I think this is actually really cool to see uh, all this different aggregations over here based off the different family size groups. Okay, next thing I wanna take a look at is uh, the embarkment. So we'll take a look at the different places that were embarked. So just put over here embarked like this. And you can see C has a higher survival compared to Q, which is about average and then S. So 
there is some things to think about on that side of things. Maybe C was like a more expensive city or more rich people ended up jumping on the ship from there. Q, maybe middle class city and S, maybe a lower class city. Don't know for sure. Um, but it is quite interesting that C has a much higher survival rate than S. So essentially, like I got a, a good amount of information here by some of the different group buys, seeing like what was going on. Uh, but now I want to start building out a few different graphs just to see even more information. Um, so I'm going to start off with a Seaborn graph. So we can just put S and S dot this plot. We can put train DF over here. We can say X equals the age, right? We're going to put our column is survived. And this will give us a more like to see the distribution of how this worked, right? If I can spell survived, that would be nice, right? Now you can do your bid with, bin with, man, I cannot type this morning. We'll put 10 over here and then height equals five. Feel free to put whatever height you want. Okay. And the reason why I just put bin with is we have all the way through, I think it was like 80 is the highest or something like that. Um, age 80 was the highest. So I felt like it'd be kind of good just to put it like that. So you can see over here, survival versus not, sorry, not survived versus survived over here. Um, so you can see like a lot of younger people end up doing pretty well and tails off like that on both sides. Okay. That is kind of interesting. So now I want to cut up the different ages. Because right now, this is just continuous, and I would like to change that. So, what we can do is something called a Q cut. So, we'll put train DF, we'll put age cut over here, age cut equals PD.Q cut. We'll put train DF age. And we'll put eight. So essentially what this does is it'll take all of our ages and then it'll pretty much put out eight different buckets associated with it, but they're all about equal in size. And we'll do the same thing for test, right? Test DF and we'll throw a test DF over here. And now that'll be in our data set. And what we can take a look at is a group by in this instance. So I'm just going to copy our classic group by over here. And we're just going to throw age cut this time into it. Okay. So you can see over here, right? Zero through 16, 55% that was survived. 16 to 20, right? 34, low 36, 35. And then you can see 28 to 32, higher again, 32 to 38, higher again. And then tails off again, 38, 47 and 47 through 80, uh, higher once again. So kind of middle age did well, upper age did well, and then very young did well, but uh, 16 to 20, 24, uh, 24 to 28. If I was on the Titanic, I, I would not have survived. I'm not upper class and I'm also in this age group. So rest in peace. But with that being said, we can grab even more information on this side of things. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change essentially the age cut and age, and we're going to rework it. So essentially we're going to be assigning ages zero all the way through seven in our model. So that way, um, just it's not as large, right? Because right now, if we again, go back over here for age, right? We have a minimum, which it says 0 0.42, which is going to be a baby all the way through 80. I'd rather just have zero through seven uh, just to make it a little bit easier on our classifier model. So this is going to be a lot of code and I'm going to have to copy bits and pieces of it, but just heads up, right? We're going to do an I lock on this one, right? And the first one is we're going to be looking under a train df we're going to say our age on this side is less than or equal to 16 
If it is, then we have our age, right? Uh, and we're gonna set that equal to zero, which is gonna be at the very bottom. Okay, we're gonna copy this and we're gonna go again. And that's from this age cut, right? If you look over here, zero, 0 0.419 to 16. So that's our first side of things. Now we're gonna take a look at 16 through 20.125. So when you're doing an eye lock and you're gonna have multiple things, make sure uh, you put these around, right? And we're gonna put an and this time. And we're gonna look at the 20.125. So I'm just gonna copy this over here. And now I have to change this up a little bit. So what I'm gonna change this up to is we're gonna say it's greater than 16. And then on this side of things, we're gonna put 20.125.125. Like that, and then we're gonna work on this next one, and we're gonna say this is a one. So, what I'm gonna do now is just build out all of these for a while, right? Feel free to copy the code if you would want to. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned because it's gonna take a little bit to code this out. So, we're gonna put 20.125 over here. Okay, our next value on this side is gonna be 24, so we'll put 24. And that should be easy, right? 24, and this is goes to 28, easy as well. 28 goes to what? Over here. 28, whoops, that should be the next one. 28. 28 goes to 32.1. And I know I could technically just put full numbers on here, but eh, whatever. 32, 132, because the ages are just gonna be integers, but it doesn't make that much of a difference, I don't think. So 38 over here. Is our logic still should work? 38 through 47. I'll just double check that too. Then 47 through 80. Seven through 80. And then lastly, we're just gonna have one of these over here. Don't need that, so we're just gonna copy that. And we'll put over here, greater than 80. Now we're gonna change all these, right? Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So let's just make sure this logic's correct before we do the same thing for test, and test will be easy, right? Um, so if age is less than 16, we're gonna assign a zero to it. If it's greater than 16, so you'd think like 17, 18, 19, 20, right? And also 20 would be included there is one. So age is greater than 20.125, so 21, all the way up through 24, right? Two, 24 or older, so 25, 26, 27, 28, right? Three, greater than 28, so 29, 30, 31, and then 32 will be here. Anything greater than 32, so think 33 all the way through 38, right? Then 39 all the way through 47, and then 48 all the way through 80, which is our high, which is seven. So that is working properly. And um, again, if you just want to put integers here, I mean, you could technically put like whatever you want. You can put 20 here because we're not gonna have full ages, but I just, again, I just copied exactly what was in this key cut. So now this is fun, right? And this is where errors sometimes happen. I did have errors like this my first time coding because I forgot to put tests on one of these trains. So just make sure that you grab everything properly, right? Otherwise uh, you'll have some issues, so. Don't skip out and just double check. And I know, like, I will call this out. I could have technically combined train and then also test early on and made this a lot easier. But visually for myself, like, I just want to see how both of these are working. And I think it's, like, easier to see rather than just building out some functions or combining these two different data frames. Like, I, I'd rather just see it. So, like... We, again, we have test, test, right? There should be three tests in here. Test, test, test. Okay, that's all there. 
And then again, zero through seven here at the end, this should be good. So let's run that. And it is not good because apparently we do have an issue. Oh, what's our issue on here? Only integers, plain arrays are valid. So we do have an issue on here. So, oh, and the reason why I have this error, I'm like 99% sure is I should have put lock, not I lock. I'm dumb. And if we rerun that, it does work. So now, since we did a lot of different stuff on here, I will just show you the data frame real quick. So train df head. And if we put this over here, again, we keep adding more and more information, right? We have our age cut over here, but our ages are now changed to five, three, five, favorite things like that. So we're looking good. So let's look at this. Again, we can make another plot. I'm gonna add in a lot more lines of code. So SNS dot this plot put train df. We'll say x equals fair. Col equals survived. I'm gonna do a bin width equals to 80. And I'll put i equals five again because I thought it looked good. Okay, let's run that. So again, you can see like the survive side of things, like once you get over here, it, you have a lot higher chance of survival based off of your fare, which I mean, we already knew based off of the classes. I mean, it's pretty obvious. So we're gonna do a very similar thing that we did above, right? Remember our cue cut where you're gonna do the same exact thing again, um, just because our fare side of things, we go all the way from zero past 500, I believe it was, you can double check. It was like what, like 530? If I remember correctly, fair, 512, right? Um, so it's a large range. I'd rather just make it pretty small. So this is going to be called fair cut. Fair cut. And this time I'm just going to put six on these. So I'll put six. And this is stuff like I could tinker with a little bit later on and see if I do have like a better model based off of like how many cuts I make. But again, we'll do that a little bit later. Not in this video, another video. So we did our train and test on here for the fair cut. And I actually messed that up because it should have been fair cut like that. We'll run that again. And I do have an issue. And that's because it should be fair, not fair cuts. And we are good to go on there. And now we can take a look at our group by assuming that I did not mess up our data frame, which I don't think I did. Because I just put the fair cut twice and it should be fine. And yeah, we are, right? So if you spent over $52, you had almost a 70% rate of survival, 26 to 52, higher again, 14 to 26, higher again. And then you can see over here, 8 to 14, about average, 7 to 8, way low, and then a 0 essentially to 7, way low. So guess what we can do again? You see all this code? We're, uh, we're gonna copy this for fair. So I'm just gonna copy this first part over here. We'll make sure we get it correct and uh, we'll build it out. So I'll just put 7.776 or 775, right? And make sure we have these numbers. Oh, actually, let's make sure, yeah, let's make sure these numbers are done correctly and then we'll change all these to fair. So we'll just copy this over here, 775. And this is the what? Eight, Point six six two six six two. Now this is actually important because could be wrong, but I don't think fares were an integer. I could double check that again. Great, right. eight six six two goes to what fourteen point five four four. You can copy that again here fourteen five four four to twenty six. And twenty six goes out to fifty two point. Error. Okay. Oh, I guess I could already have that copied. Yeah, and it's not because like that one fair was like 512. So there's no way that would be an integer. And that's it. Okay. Let's just copy 
that now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'll just look at the data frame, right? Bear 7.25, 71.2833, which is kind of interesting. Like you would have thought it'd been rounded, 7.925. So yeah, um, it is a float for sure. Okay, make sure um, all these ages are changed to fair. So we'll put fair like this, and then we'll just double check. So just double check everything before we change this to test. So train df dot lock train df. We have our fair here, seven seven five fair right, seven seven five and train eight point six six two fair right, eight six six two fair again fourteen five four fourteen five four train fair twenty six twenty six to fifty two. 52 to 512, 512, we have fair on each of these, right? Fair, 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 which is good. Over here, right, fair as well. Fair is there and fair is there. I'm saying fair a lot, but that's good. Now we need to just do this for test real quick. And we'll just do the same thing. We'll just copy test DF. So we'll start off here on the left, right? Test, 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 test. Okay, and one last time. Our first two don't have those, and then we still have fair here. Again, zero through five, looks good. Cross our fingers, and I think that should be there. So I talked about it a little bit earlier. There's a lot of stuff that you could actually technically extract from the name. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is try to find the title of a person and we're gonna have to do a string split. So let's have some fun and do that. So I'm just gonna show you how the string split works first before we assign it back into our data frame as title. So all I'm gonna do is train df, I'll put name over here and you can do str.split We'll have to put our pattern in here. So pattern equals, and I'm gonna put a comma, right? Because everyone has these commas. So I'll put over here our comma, and then we're gonna do expand equals true. It's super important we put that over here because we're gonna just grab parts of this, right? And this is the first section. I'm gonna show you the second section in a second, but let's put this over here first, just so you can see how that works, right? So we have zero and also one, right? So names over here. Um, so what we're gonna do first is gonna just grab our one, which is gonna be this over here because I don't care about these last names. So if I just put over here one, right? Now we have all this, but guess what? We can also string split again. So we're gonna do that, right? So I'm just literally gonna copy this string split like this. And this time what we're gonna put here instead is a Dot. Okay, and then we're gonna put this over here and check this out. We have zero, one, and also two. Um, but I care about zero, right? Like Mr. Mrs. Miss, Mr. Mr. Rev, Miss. Like that's what I only care about. So we'll put a zero over here, right? And we have all this over here. Now what I'm gonna do is add in a lambda function. So we can just do dot apply over here. And then we'll say lambda x, and then we'll do x dot strip. Throw this over here. And I'm gonna assign this now back into my train df as title. So we'll put here like that. Title. equals, and I'm just gonna double check this one more time to make sure this code works. So we have train df title, train df name, we string split it, right? We grab the one and then we string split again, we grab zero. And if I can spell apply, that'd be nice. We have lambda x over here. And I'm just gonna have a space over here just to format this a little bit better. And guess what? We're gonna go over here. We're gonna do this again. And then this time we're gonna do it for a test. So make sure it is correct. Test this time, test name, string split, expand true. I think 
We are good. Great. And now we can group by our titles. So again, just copy this group by code. Using it a lot. So you should be pretty familiar with group by at the end of this video. At least if you learn something, right? I hope you learned something. But we have our different titles. And um, it's interesting, right? So you have like Captain, Colonel, Don, Doctor, Jonk here, Lady, Major, Master, Miss, right? Not too familiar with those. I did a little research. I think they're like French or something like that. Mr., Mrs., Rev., Sir, and the Countess. So there's too much here, right? So I'll show you. I'll actually just put this over here. What I did first is I did a little bit of research based off of it. Um, so military, right? Makes sense. Captain, Colonel, Major, a uh, Noble. So like John here, the Countess, Don, Lady, Sir. So like all I had to do is literally just go over here, like John here. I have no idea what the heck John here is. Is an honor in low countries denoting lowest rank within the nobility. So like. Okay, so that's someone that's noble, right? The Countess Noble, Don Noble, Lady Sir, like, it's noble. And then I researched these, right? These were just unmarried female. So, okay, now we kind of have an idea what some of these are. We can actually, like, make this way nicer instead of having all the way to 16 or 17 technically, right? Um, because we can't throw our categorical information into our machine learning model. We we're gonna have to change this later on and I'd rather just start fixing this now. So here's what we're gonna do. Again, we're gonna have to build out a dictionary and we're gonna throw out a lot more code over here. So we're gonna say train df title equals train df title and we're gonna do a dot replace. And essentially what we're going to do, again, is a dictionary, uh, but we're going to put each of these over here. So like, uh, first thing is our captain, right? So captain, C-A-P-T, we're going to make this now as military, which we already have over here. Military, put a comma. Then we're going to do the next thing for colonel, right? So colonel over here military comma we're going to do this now for major right and we're going to go through this whole list of doing this and i know it takes a lot of time but i want to show you everything i don't want to skip ahead and just say do it on yourself do it yourself right hope that's how i spell it i guess i could technically just go over here and copy these and it is the same I'm just going to say it's noble, right, the countess, like that, okay, and then we'll say noble again, and then Don, I think was capital, make sure Don is capital. AD is noble. Sir is noble. M L L E noble. Mrs. Noble. And then M M E is also normal. Now you also want to explain why I did that apply for the strip over here. Is I don't think I explained it. <laughs> I do apologize if I did. But the reason and the only reason why I'm explaining this is I spent a lot of time trying to figure out this bug. So um, the strip is gonna remove the spaces at the end. So when I did this string split, there's still going to be spacing and I built out this dictionary and it wasn't working. And I was like, what the heck? Why is this not working? And I kept trying things like, I'm like, all right, well, 
maybe I'm like typing something wrong or something like that. And I don't know. I spent like an hour trying to debug and literally all I had to do is add the supply strip and it worked perfect. So I'll try to explain when I do have bugs, like in my initial version, but that's why um, I had to add that at the very end instead of just splitting originally on um, the comma and also the period. But okay, so we have this over here. I think this is gonna be correct. And then we'll do the same thing for tests, right? So make sure we put test DF like that, a title. And that should be correct on this side of things. So Captain Colonel, the Countess, just make sure the Countess is like that. Yeah, Don, Lady, Sir, and that should be good. We'll run this code that's been built into title. And then we're gonna group by this title because it's gonna be way better now. And it is, right? So there's some interesting um, pieces of information in here. So we still have our doctor, right? And actually, before I do that, I wanna also um, do an aggregate over here. I forgot to do this on this one. I uh, Just to show you the counts on these and why we clean this up. Um, so we'll just put counts and also mean put that over here like this. Mean. I think that should be correct. I'm going to put this in here like that. I think we should have this now. Yeah, yeah. So here's why I wanted to do this. Like if I go back actually up over here too and do it. Oh, I guess I already changed the data frame. So it's too late now. Um, yeah, it's too late now, but like a lot of these were like two or three people in general. But like down over here, like you can see now Dr. 7, Master 40, Military 5, Miss 182, Mr. Mrs. like Noble 9. Like I get Noble, Rev, and like Military and Doctor aren't a lot, but like it's way cleaner than where it was, right? Originally we had 17. Now we have eight. Again, much better, uh, but we have some more information here. So Doctor's a little bit above average. Which I would have thought doctors have been a little bit higher, but I guess some people just wanted to stay behind technically. Just I don't know. It I thought doctors would be a little bit higher, but they are. I mean, they're above average, right? Master 0.575, military. Uh, I mean, there's only five there, so it's kind of tough, but two over there, so technically above average. Um, miss, right? Explained a lot. Mr. down way below, misses again, way above. Um, it which makes sense, right? Like Someone might say, my wife should go, not me, right? And that's why they're noble, really, really high. Again, we talk about class. And then uh, the Rev. Uh, so anyone that was religious, essentially a religious leader, zero. So I guess, again, like in perspective, religion could be an account. Someone saying, hey, you know, I'm going to go here and pray with people uh, when the Titanic is going down. Not to bring religion into this, but that would be my assumption on this. And I'm... By no means an expert on Titanic. I haven't even watched the movie. Uh, so if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, right? But just spitballing some stuff over here. So we have that, right? The other thing we can take a look at now is the name length. So essentially, the assumption is someone has a longer name. They're a little bit more important, especially with like last names or adding in titles and different things like that. So it's another way to see importance uh, with someone, so I'm just gonna drink some water because I've been talking like for an hour. <sighs> Need a little bit of water. Okay. And we still have a lot more to go. So this video is a beast. And again, I started this morning at 5 a.m. to try to get this done before the workday. So if you guys are enjoying this, please subscribe to the channel, leave some comments. And I'm gonna do probably more Kaggle projects in the future. So I'm gonna put in here name length equals train df, put name in here, and we're gonna do a dot apply. And all you're gonna do is another lambda function, which I know it's not my scikit stuff, but I do have video on lambda functions. So if you wanna learn them, they are always still a little bit confusing, I'm not gonna lie. But at least it should clear up how they work, I would hope. And they are pretty useful, right? So we're gonna just do this. 
So essentially what this function takes a look at is the name, right? We're, we're applying the X, which is gonna just tell us the length of each of these names. So train test, train test, that looks good over here. And now I'm actually gonna plot the name length. And then this is something I actually copied from another notebook. I saw this and I was like, that's interesting because like originally I just um, did it like this for the different types of titles. Uh, but when I was doing a little bit of research, I uh, saw that name lengths definitely had an impact. And also it kind of makes sense, like name length, a little bit more importance, especially in the early 1900s. So I was like, okay, we, we got to grab something along the lines of that. And that's why like, you can just do this basic Lambda. And then I saw this chart and I wanted to copy it. So we're going to put this in over here. So we're going to do a KDE plot, KDE plot like this. Then we're going to put in here train df and here our name length like that then we're going to put over here we're going to put over here like this train df Five equals zero. I'm going to put and do this. Yeah. Name length. And this time we're going to put not null because we still have some null values with our name length. So we're going to put not null like that. Okay. And I know this is pretty ugly. So maybe you just want to copy this from the notebook. That's fine. That's what I originally did. But I'm just going to code this out for you guys. And like with charts in general, there's a few different ways you can build these out. To be honest with you, like I do use chat GTP for charts all the time because it's so much easier to be honest on that side of things, or you just copy stuff that you see on Stack Overflow or just the documentation, just so much easier. And then type in all this out because you will get errors. It's good to know the fundamentals on how this works, but like in reality, it'll save you a lot of time. So many of the charts that you will need are already coded. So why reinvent the wheel? Okay. So have those two. And then we need to set our labels. So G dot set X label here. Name length. And I hope this is all correct. We don't have any bugs. Y label. Frequency. G equals G dot legend. Not survived. Survived. And then survived. No bugs, all right. Okay, we're good, we're good. So take a look at that side of things. And as I mentioned, right, name length, we can definitely see more people survived when they have a longer name, just this is on top of each other. I love this chart, by the way. Um, but when I saw this, I was like, all right, I, I definitely got to build this out in this video and also my Kaggle project. So that's pretty cool. But you know what's not cool? is we're gonna do another one of these Q cuts and have a lot of code associated with it. So let's grab our friend over here, this Q cut. And I guess, honestly, I could have just kept this out. It's not a lot of code here. Next section is, but we'll uh, do that. So the first thing I wanna see as well 
is another group by. So I'm just going to do name length GB in this one. And then we're going to put name length over here like this just to see the group by side of things. Train, right, key cut. And I think I put eight on here. Let's do eight. I just basically goes all the way technically 80. I think it goes with 90 possibly. I did not do that math. Uh, we'll just do eight. Okay. We'll do another group by. So just copy that. Put this in here and boom. All right. 38 to 82.75, 30 to 38.517, 27 to 30.42, below, 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 below. 100% name length, right? Uh, something, again, I, would, I wouldn't have thought of originally, but yeah, there, there's an impact. Okay, you guys are going to hate me. Sorry. But we're going to copy this monstrosity again and go down below over here. And we're gonna change up all of this again. And actually, I'm gonna remove tests because we'll just change tests at the very end. And again, we have everything zero through seven, which is nice, but now we need to change up this. So 18 over here, 18, we're gonna have exactly 20. Nice, All right? Thank you very much for that. 20 to 23, so kind of close, right? 23, then 23 to And 27.25 to 30, 30 to 38. And then we have 38 to 82. So I was close when I said it was around 80. Which is cool. Let's see. 82. All right. Now we need to put in our name length over here. So we have. So our normal name length. So let's start with this left one. Put all those in here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the right. And then we'll change this at the very end. Right. Well, actually, we're not going to do name length on this side of things. We're going to build out a brand new column called name size on this side of things. So let's actually change that there. All right, so let's just double check all this works. So train df dot lock, which we wanted, right? Train df name length. We have name length there. 18, 18, 20, 23, 25, 27, 25, 30, 38, and also 82, right? 20, 23, 25, 27, 30, 38, 82, that looks correct. And then we have our name size, which we're building out. Name size, name size. I think we're good to go. And um, we'll just put our test over here. Put the test. And let's run that. And boom. Let's also just put in our train df dot head like that. And we'll run that too.
And we have all this over here. All built out. So we have this over here. And I do want to call this out because I just took a look at my source code on my original stuff. And I actually had an error on this side of things. As funny as it is. Um, well, it's not really funny per se. But like I made an error. I stopped at five for some reason. And I didn't have these exact numbers on my actual test set. So that is something that may improve the accuracy or may not. Also, just taking a look at this real quick, I do have an issue because I need to make all these train instead of uh, test. And I'm just gonna fix that real quick before I forget later on. So I need to rerun the cell again too because that is gonna be an issue. And also I need to repaste that back in my uh, final version of this. And let me just make sure all the tests over here and we'll run this again. And yeah, so make sure you code this properly. And I'm just gonna take two seconds real quick. And make sure I did that on the other ones. Test, 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 right? I think there's three of these I did. Test. Yeah, those look fine there. I um, made that mistake though in my final version that I actually uploaded my code for. So again, I need to double check that sometimes. And that's kind of cool thing about going through your code again is you can see if you made any mistakes. And I definitely did on the original one because I stopped here at five for some reason. I had five, five again. And um, I was looking at something else and said name size. So that definitely did impact my model in some instance. I'm not sure specifically what the new accuracy will be. Uh, but we'll see it live, right? Okay, now I'm gonna take a look at the ticket side of things. So we've taken a little lot of stuff, right? Not passenger ID, but we've uh, done a deep dive so far, kind of on survive class. So we definitely took a deep dive on name. We took a look male, female, right? Age we've done, uh, sib and parts we've done, ticket we haven't, fare we have, right? Uh, cabin we have not yet. Embarked, we have right family size, we already did, and um, titles we took a look at too, right? So, like, a lot of this is good. Now we have to look at ticket, and ticket's going to be very similar. If we go back over here um, to name, there's a lot of information that we could technically extract from it, and I don't know for sure, but we'll take a look, right? So, we train DF ticket. We have all this information over here. Now I am going to split up this ticket. It took a little bit to figure out a little bit of the code. So I'm going to show you how this works. So train DF. And the first thing we're going to grab is ticket number. And when I was doing this, it was a little bit complicated because ticket, like, and I'll explain. So if you take a look at these tickets, right? Some of them have a spot in the beginning, then there's a space and there's here. There's some of them that don't have the spot in the beginning. There's periods, there's slashes. Like, it's not the easiest. So to grab this specific ticket number, uh, we're gonna have to move backwards this time and just grab this initially. And um, well, before I actually build out ticket number, I'll just show you how that works. So we'll do train DF and we'll throw in here a ticket like this. Again, we're going to apply a Lambda function. So apply, put Lambda X, and we're going to do a PD dot series over here. Ticket X dot split like that here. Then we put negative one. I think that should. Nope, I have an issue. Needs to be capitalist, I think. So look, uh, since this code works backwards, right? We have our full tickets over here. So now we can assign this to ticket number. Train DF equals. And we'll put over here ticket number. 
the same thing for test. Test EF. And those should be both in there. Okay, we are now gonna essentially do a group by. And um, we're actually gonna copy the group by with the counts on here. And the reason why is I wanna see, you know, if there's been any common ticket numbers. And I need to actually do one other thing. We're gonna sort our values. So it was funny, I, I did these a lot when I was originally doing pandas and looking at interview questions, which is a great way to learn, by the way. Like, practice interview questions initially just to get used to seeing some stuff. And um, we'll put ascending equals false. I do have a link down below for our interview questions if you want to see that. So you can take a look like 347, count 7070. Zero, zero. Most people survive there, 60. So we do see what's going on on that side of things. Um, but we can actually do something pretty cool. We can actually transform our count on here. So like we can apply this to our data frame. So we'll do train df for here dot group by, and I'll just show you how this works initially and why we're doing that. So the ticket number here, okay. Put this over here again, dot transform counts. And essentially what this will do is for each passenger, say how the count of like the tickets. So like if someone has the ticket number 347082, they'll say like they have the ticket of seven on there. So um, we're gonna build that out now. Maybe I didn't explain that the best, but like, all right, let me explain it again. So like going over here, if this passenger has 21171, right? There's seven of those 21171s on here, there's gonna be a column over here that says like ticket number count seven. So essentially showing like how common that ticket is. And I know it's not the full string, like there's A5 and things like that, but that's what I'm taking a look at. Okay, ticket number counts equals, and I'm literally just gonna We'll do the same thing with test. And we'll have this in here now. Okay. And um, we're gonna do a group by. And we're not gonna do that one. Instead, we're gonna go back over here. And We'll do counts instead. And there we go. So you see only one ticket number, 029, two ticket numbers, 056, 371, 405, and then it tapers off over here. So have a few people on the ship, you're more likely to survive or at least in the same ticket numbers. And that's essentially what we saw also with family size is like once we grew it a little bit. Now, I again, I didn't do this in my original code, but like maybe I could group these kind of like where I did earlier and say like unique ticket, like multiple tickets, like a lot of tickets. Like, I don't know, like that's something that we could take a look at. But in this instance, I did not, I will do this in version two. I'm going to make that note. Um, <laughs> they're going to write this down right now. But in version two, we're going to do like more type of grouping around ticket numbers. So I'll just say here, more grouping ticket number counts. And maybe we get a little more accurate. Um, but we'll see, right? Like you can play around with it and see what happens. But I just made a mental note in my notebook. So that way we can do this and 
that's the beauty of it, right? You can always improve your models and there's ways to do it. So, okay. Next thing that I want to do now is go back into our, our ticket again. So I'm just going to grab this. And I want to kind of analyze this first section of it and see if I can grab some more information on it. So we're going to do that, right? So string split, pattern equals, we'll put there, and we'll say expand equals true, like that. Not sure why this isn't running. There we go. I guess it just lagged for a second. And then we have zero and also our one. Again, you can talk, see what I was talking about with some of these being like kind of tough to grab. So it is what it is, right? Now, this code is a little complicated. I apologize. It took a little bit to figure this one out as well. So we're going to use np.where, say our train df ticket. And this was something that I think took a while to figure out in my initially. And um, this was not fun. I will tell you that, like a lot of debugging on this one, I'm pretty sure, or like researching or something like that. I know this took forever. So equals true. And then we grabbed one for this first one. Okay. So maybe I'll just build another line over here and show you what I did on this side of things. So first thing is we grabbed that. Oh, and we made sure this is not NA. So, all right, yeah, I'll go back and I'll explain how this works. Okay, I remember this now. So, <laughs> you see how these are zero, one, and two? Well, to have like this information over here being A5 or PC or stone O2, you have to have a number in one over here. Like you can see over here, we're just a ticket number without that call in the first. This is null, right? None. 373, none. Um, so our first filter is going to take a look at, see if this is none or not. If it's none, then like we don't have that information over here on the right. So that's what I did first, right? And we put not NA. Okay. And then I'll do train DF ticket the S string split pattern equals over there to expand equals true. Okay, and this time we're grabbing zero on air. And then now we have to do a apply our lambda function. Like I said, this was this was very tough initially. And maybe you're looking at this and saying it's not tough. Uh, it was for me at first. Sometimes uh, this logic stuff is fun. And then a blank. All right, so here's how this works. So essentially we're taking a look at this ticket, right? First thing we're doing is making sure that this one is not null, right? If it's not null, then we're grabbing the split, we're grabbing this zero. Um, but if it is null, then we're going to say, um, it's blank. Okay. And I hope I don't have a bug on here is, uh, it's never fun, but we'll put this over here, train DF and we'll say over here as ticket location like that 
let's say equals this. And um, we're gonna have to copy this again, paste it because this time we're doing test. Test DF, test DF ticket over here. Test DF ticket string split span equals true. And we have all those. Now we can take a look at our value counts. So we'll say train DF ticket location dot value counts and we'll run that over here and you can see most of our things are blank okay but there's a lot of different things over here like there's so much now remember this fun stuff from earlier where I um, mapped everything. Well, I spent a lot of time and I mapped it also for these ticket locations. So I, again, I, I could be wrong, right? But like there's stuff over here, like you see SC Paris, all caps, SC lowercase Paris. Like I combine those together, right? A slash four with a dot, A slash four. I don't know if it's just like how the data was inputted or what. Um, I don't know, but I wanted to clean that up. Maybe it's not the best way to do it, but this was something I wanted to try out. This takes a lot of time. So like when you see me doing this live like this, you don't see the research that goes behind it. And like, I literally built out a notepad. I'm like, okay, well I can combine O Q O Q, right? And like, okay, I can combine these Paris is how many different ones we have. Like, and I started doing a lot of combos like this and just taking a ton of notes. And that's something that these like YouTube tutorials sometimes just don't show you because it's tough to, but like, there's a lot more to it than just like coding line by line. I'll just say it like that. Like, well, and I'll show you how this works too. You just got to think of like how you can clean up this data essentially. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm literally just going to copy my code for over here just because this is going to be a little dirty and I recommend you do it as well. Um, but you can see like here, right? So O period Q period. I made this the O Q with the slash at the end, right? C A C A C A with a dot C A right S C Paris two of those A four A five A five A five and W C is just W C so like this value count is going to go down a lot. We'll take a look at this right, and we're going to do the same thing for test on here. Sorry, I didn't code this out live, but if I didn't copy this over, I would probably have some issues just based off of you know. A lot of periods, slashes, spacing, and just how it is. Like, there's a lot of stuff over here that needs to be cleaned up. Okay, then I'm going to run it on here. And then we can do another group by. And we'll just do this value count again over here with this group by. Okay. I don't need this sort values this time, but I'll just copy this and put ticket location over here. And looks like this not run. Oh, it did run. I just, um, there's still 32 of these, right? Like initially there's a lot over here. Just double check SC Paris, like A4 is here, right? I thought this didn't run at first, but we had more than 32. Um, It's tough, right? Like our blank is like the average mean 
But then like everything else over here, minus the 60 and like 41, like there's not a lot of data to go with. So I'm not going to use this in my final model for ticket location. And I'd rather just keep this in here just to show you like not everything you do research wise is going to move forward, right? Like here, I really thought there'd be a chance and maybe there is, right? Like maybe you want to do a little bit more investigation and search this even more and say, hey, well, you know, you can actually com combine both of these sotons over here or this stone and this stone and like, I don't know, like do a lot more research essentially on where these ticket locations are. And I'd love to see that research. Like if you want to put it down below in the comment section, I think that would be pretty cool to see, right? And it's like how you could expand on this project. I'm not doing it for this video, but uh, just to show you, like you can do some research on it originally and like, or at least do investigation. And sometimes it doesn't work out. And like, this was a classic case for me. This did not work out. Maybe I spent a few more hours, I figure it out, but right now I'm not. Uh, now, instead, I'm going to take a look at the cabin, which I think is the last thing on here we haven't done yet. So we're almost done with our first part of this video. We'll say train DF, we'll put cabin in here like this. Say equals train DF, we'll put cabin, we'll say dot fill and A, and we'll throw in a U over here. Okay. And then we're gonna do another train df cabin equals, and I did copy this code. I saw this in a notebook and I thought this was pretty great. So we'll just put this over here. It's a little technical. So we'll just put this over here. I zero if not ed dot is null i else x for i and train df cabin A. So essentially what we're taking a look at over here is the cabin locations. And I'm gonna just copy this also for our test. And we're filling in anything that is not there with a U. That should be correct. Okay. So now we can do a group by on these cabins. Let's do that. So we're just gonna grab this again. Okay. So I did notice this right away. So if you take a look, like all of our cabins that have been assigned were above, really above the average versus unassigned. So maybe like poor people didn't get their cabins assigned initially and the rich people decided like, Hey, this is where my cabin's going to be. So I'm going to simplify this down a lot and make this binary, right? So like essentially you have a cabin. Awesome. Right? You're one. If you're not, you're going to be a zero. So we'll just do this over here. Train DF will say cabin assigned equals train df, we'll throw in cabin again, right? We're gonna do dot apply, and we're gonna throw in a lambda function. Shocker, once again, like, 
Lambda functions are super important. So lambda x, right? We're going to say it's going to be 0 if x is in this over here. And I believe we had capital U. Capital U it is, right? U. And I don't need a comma there. Else 1. All right. We'll do that for test 2. Which, again, I'm looking at my uh, final code, and I actually made a mistake because I did not change this to test. I actually kept this as train on this side of things. So again, something that could increase accuracy, could technically decrease it too in perspective, but I think it'll increase. So train df equals train df dot apply our lambda function, right? Zero, then u, our test over here, and we should be good. Okay, and um, then I'm just gonna do another group by over here. Let's say our cabin assigned. And look at that, zero and one for cabin assigned. That is a big difference. And one last time before we start doing other stuff, dot head to take a look what's going on. And we have this beautiful data frame now. And you see those dots. It's not everything in our data frame showing up. But essentially, if we take a look at our shape. 24 over there, 891. And um, we're looking good, right? And if we do our test DF, our test should have everything but survived. Yeah, that shape. So it should be 23, 418, and 23. Okay, so now we're gonna start cleaning up a few things before we start running our models. And this includes also building out pipelines and different things like that. So first thing that we're gonna do is train df.info. And here we go. So all of the different columns, and we can see like age, is 714. So like we need to fix our age embarked. We need to fix that age cut. And like we're gonna drop some of the different cuts, like age cut, we're gonna drop that, fair cut, we're gonna drop that. Um, but some of this stuff needs to be worked on. Since we're gonna be doing that as well, I'm gonna do a train df.columns just so I can copy over stuff. I know I could technically just you know copy here, but whatever, right? Now this paste all the different columns over here. I'm also really quickly gonna just do a test df.info, see if we are missing anything on the test df side of things. Uh, because it's possible, right? And we should have 418 for everything. So we have less on the age side of things, um, but we actually are missing one fair. Find it interesting, right? Age cut fair, we're gonna drop those again. And um, okay, so we're gonna fill in some NAs first real quick. And we're gonna throw this again in the pipeline, but it's honestly pretty easy just to do it now. So I'm just gonna say train df, and we're gonna do our age stuff first. So age was in both of these as NAs, so fill NA. And what we're gonna do for this one is just put the mean train df, and I, I don't know if that's the 100% the correct thing to do, to be honest with you. And maybe we could have done more research on like if blank ages had an impact. And I'm going to write that down because I just thought of that. So I'm going to see if like blank ages impact on survival. Because like we could, right? And that's something just think of, I just thought of now. I never really investigated. So another benefit of me recording this video is I have ideas for part two, right? Um, but that'll be something I look into. So we have mean, and then we'll say in place equals true, which I guess you could also just say train df age equals that, but like, I like in place and true. I know it's not the best uh, usage case. You're not technically supposed to do that. But again, and just put that there. Uh, we have our test age fill in a right, and then 
I'm going to say test DF our fair since we know that one fair is missing. And um, we'll just copy this over here and make sure it's fair. And make sure that we have our test with our tests. And that should be good on that side of things, right? Replacing some of the NAs. Okay, now we need to start calling some of our different stuff that we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna call our one high encoder, ordinal encoder, and then also simple computer. I know we already did these over here, but I'm just gonna do it one more time. So OHE equals one hot encoder. And one thing I recommend is sparse output equals false. So that way it still is a data frame. I wish it was like that by default. ODE equals ordinal encoder. And then we'll say SI equals simple computer strategy equals most frequent. And um, we're actually going to use the simple computer now that I remember on uh, embarked. So technically can't use the mean on that one. So we're going to use it on that side of things. Okay. We're going to just call this real quick, right? And let's keep moving. So now we need to think about our different columns um, that we're going to use one hot encoder and also ordinal encoder on. So I'm just going to do these real quick. ODE calls equal, and then we'll put OHE. All right, so let me explain what we're doing over here. Okay. Ordinal encoder ODE is if there's like an inherent ranking on side of things. So if we look at our categorical data that we still have over here that we need to change, we're going to actually be using that on that family sized group, right? Because there's like ranking involved with it, right? Different group sizes. One hot encoder is if there's not. So like if you think about something like our sex or like embarked, right? Those should be each brand new columns, like your male or female or the, di the three different cities they embarked. I forgot the letters. I think it's like C, S, and I can't remember the last one. Um, but those should be individual columns. And it will be either zero or one, right? Like either you're a male or female. Zero for male, one for female, or one for male, zero for female. A city, let's just say it's like CS and Q. Again, I don't remember the exact number, uh, exact letters, but like you embark from C, one, with S and Q, zero, zero. So essentially that's what we're doing. Uh, the family size group, right? Each of those are gonna have a number assigned to it within one specific column. So if there's like a ranking with categorical information, use ordinal encoder. If not, use one hot encoder. And that's what we're gonna do. So over here, we're gonna put family, size grouped and then over here for one hot encoder we're going to put sex and then we're also going to put embarked and i have videos explaining both of these if you do not understand them please watch it and again feel free to watch my whole uh scikit learn playlist it'll help you out in this video okay now we're going to set up train df for x and also our y's. So for x, we're gonna drop the survived. So we'll put that in here, survived. We're gonna say our axis equals one, axis equals one. And then our y equals train df. And we'll put over here also just certain five. And I don't know why I misspelled this. Survived again. I woke up super early. I woke up an hour early at like 5 a.m. to get this video done. I usually wake up at like 536 and run, but did not do that also this morning. So a little off, but I just knew this would take forever. 
Um, we're also going to do our X test. And I'm just going to say we're going to drop age cut and also fair cut on here like this. I was having a bug before I dropped these. So I was having a little bit of an issue with that side of things. Uh, so I'm just going to drop these ahead of time. Like that. And our axis equals one. So make sure we have our X, capital X, lowercase y, X test, capital X, sorry, test yet dot drop, H cut, fair cut, survive, survive. Should be good there. Okay. Great. Now we're going to do our X train test split. Now, essentially what we're doing is a validation set in here. So not normally like option train test split on these videos, but we'll do X train X valid y train y valid equals train test split we're going to say x and also our y which we had a little bit earlier we're going to do a test size equals 0 0.2 right we're going to say stratify this instance equals y um, because we want to spread out essentially when someone survived or not survived. And then we're going to say random state of 21. Random state was 21. Okay. We have that in here. All right. Pipelines. This is, um, this is going to be probably the hardest part of this video is building out these pipelines. So just take a second, you know, if you're watching the video, Relax, try to follow along. I do a pipeline video. Explains a lot better, but let's build this out. Again, this is gonna be the most complicated part of the video. If you can figure out the pipeline, like you got this for your first machine learning. So ordinal pipeline equals pipeline, put in here steps equal. All right. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're building out our ordinal pipeline, right? Which is why we built out this over here. And then we're going to build out a one hot encoder pipeline. Then we're going to use a column transformer and we're going to do that. We're going to put all this together. We're going to throw an imputer. We're going to pass through the columns that we want to keep. And then we're going to drop every other column that we do not care about. Yeah, that sounds like a lot, but the thing is like, once you have a pipeline, it's super easy to run all your machine learning models and you know the specific steps that have been taken on your data. It's the benefit of it. So it is complicated to set up, right? And you will make mistakes like setting it up, I promise you. But like once it's done, so much better. And it's actually good for data engineering as well. There's a lot of use, a lot of use cases. So. Make sure you have it. Okay, so I'm gonna say simple computer over here. Strategy equals most frequent. Again, if you think about it, right? Um, that's our family size. I think there was one missing, maybe not. I think there was, and that's why we're putting that in here. Okay, then we're gonna throw in ORD for ordinal. Let's say ordinal. Encoder. I'm going to say handle unknown. Make sure you put that in there because encoded value and then put whatever you want. I'm going to say unknown value equals negative one. So that's our ordinal. Okay. Now we need to put our one hot. So I'm just gonna name this as OHE. Guess I could have put this as like ORD pipeline, but whatever. I'm gonna keep this impute in here. I'm gonna name this as like one hot. Okay. Now essentially what I'm gonna do is copy this. Put this in here 
like that. I'm going to say handle known. More. Okay, so that's our ordinal and one hot encoder pipelines. Guess I probably should make each of these their own separate steps. That so make sure that there's no errors. Okay, pretty sure that's correct. Now we need to build out our transformer, which is it's fun. Okay. Column transformer over here. Transformers equal. And now we're going to build out a lot of steps. So first thing we're going to do is impute. So this is going to impute just in case something is missing and we'll say SI. And that's that age column again. Again, I was having some issues originally with my pipeline and age. So maybe some of this stuff is redundant and I don't specifically need it. I'm just throwing it in here again. So just to call that out, I had a lot of bugs with age originally. So I'm if I impute the values or fill the mean values or fill the not mean values, but fill the missing values a few times. That that's the reason why I had multiple errors with it. I spent a lot of hours trying to debug this originally. So, or the pipeline over here, right? That's just our text. And then we're going to put this over here, our ordinal and pipeline. And then we need to say what columns we're putting this to, right? And that is why we have those ODE columns from earlier. Make sure you actually put a comma here at the end because you will have some issues this time, right? We're going to do one hot encoder. So OHE pipeline, OHE calls, and then we'll just put OHE pipeline here. Okay. Up next, we're going to do a pass through. So usually at the end of like a column transformer, you can either say pass through or remainder drop. Uh, this time we're going to be doing pass through and saying which columns we want to keep and then dropping the rest because there's a lot of columns that we don't really care about anymore uh, since we actually have like changed them up. So pass through and then make sure we have pass through again like that. And then we're going to say all the columns that we actually care about, right? So P class, we want to see that at the very end, right? I want to see ticket number counts. Number counts, if we care about that one. We want to see our cabin assigned. We actually care about that one. We want to see our name size, which that's there. Name size. We actually want to see our age. And we actually want to see our fare. So besides the stuff in our ordinal pipeline and one hot encoder pipeline, these are the other columns that we are going to care about. So that's good, right? That means we have that working. Great. Awesome. Now a few other things we're going to do. So I'm going to put a comma over here and this goes all the way here at the very end. So now we need to mention what happens to our remainder. So our remainder equals drop, drop those columns we do not care about. Put a comma over here. I think I definitely messed up something because it keeps tapping me out, but we'll see. And then end jobs equals negative one. And we have that. So let me just make sure everything is correct over here. We have call trans equals column transformer transformers. That's there. I make that mistake all the time. I just put transformer instead of transformers. Impute SI or throw age in there. Ord pipeline, ordinal pipeline, ODE calls. One hot pipeline, right? OD, OHE, OHE, we have a comma at there. 
pass through. We have pass through again, P class, take a number of counts, right? Cap and assign min size. And I think we are good. Actually, I don't think we have a bug. So let's just run that. I, uh, I speak too soon sometimes, right? Column transformer. Did I not put this in the beginning? Thought I did. You know what? I did not. Oops. So make sure, uh, You put this over here. Technically, you could have put it in the code at the very bottom, but put it over here. And I think in my original version, I actually kept it here at the bottom. And it's working. All right, now we can start taking a look at all of our models, which is great. Fantastic, fantastic. All right, so here's the thing, guys. We have six models, if I remember correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? We're going to be building out parameter grips for, for hyperparameter tuning as well. It's going to take some time, right? Especially to run everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to code everything out. And then I think what it will do is like do a run all at the very end. And if there's any bugs, there's any bugs, right? Like we'll debug it. But until then, like I, I'll code it out, but I'm not going to run everything just because when I run some of these models, it will take five, 10 minutes each or so. And I don't want to keep pausing the video. So we're just going to code out the six different models and then um, I'll run it. And then we'll come back and build out our output and everything like that. So. We'll start over here with our random forest classifier. So RFC. And again, I should have videos pretty much on every one of these models that I'm doing, except for naive bias, which I will do that in the future. I promise you guys we'll do that. So I'm just calling our random forest classifier. We'll do our param grid, right? Just like this equals and we're gonna do a lot of stuff and this is why it's gonna take a while. So estimators, and again, this is something that, that like, I could try to optimize in the future and get better results. It's, it's an art though, with parameter tuning. From what I've researched though, your data is more important than hyperparameter tuning. You'll get more, it's like 80, 20 principle, but like they go up the leaderboards a little bit, like just slightly more accurate model as crazy as it is. Like you could go up a thousand, like thousand plus spots on this leaderboard, um, which I kind of want to say I get a top 10% on this would be kind of cool because right now I'm not, I'm like top 15 or something around there. So um, it is what it is, right? And then do like nine ten ten. and again each uh, model has their own parameters you can take a look at all the different parameters on uh, the scikit documentation what i'm just doing is some of the stuff that i know has like the biggest impact on them and Feel free to change what you want, right? Like if you find something more accurate, do let me know. But like you can change the parameters that you want in here. You can change the numbers associated with it. Like there's there's so much that you can do with this. And um, yeah, so I'm not gonna explain how every one of these parameters works just because there's gonna be so many. You gotta think about it between six models. But watch those other videos and read the docs. I think it will help you out. Hey, I did actually run that one, so I do apologize. Just a bad habit, right? I always just shift tab at the end, especially working on notebooks all the time. Grid 
search CD. Equals RFC. Then what we're doing is our cross validation. So we're gonna say our stratified K fold. We'll say in here N splits equals five. And here's how you like finalize everything else. So we'll say like pipe final RFC equals make pipeline. And then we'll put our column transformer that we had over here. Then you put your RFC, which we had over here. And essentially that's why we use our pipeline, right? And you'll see some really cool stuff happen at the very end. Pipe final RFC dot fit. We're gonna fit our X train and also our Y train at the end. And then what we can do too is print out our best estimators. So we'll put CVRFC the best params. And that'll tell us like what worked the best for a model. And then we can also put best score in here. That'll tell us what the best score is. Okay. And now we'll do our decision tree. And there, I mean, it's still a lot for everything, right? Like it's, a lot of work, but it's fine. And random four should outperform decision tree or it'll be very close based off of our training data, but they still want to show both. So pram grids, min sample splits, 5, 10, 15, min sample safe, one, two, four, max depth. We'll just change it like. I don't know, 10, 20, 30. Then we'll keep these over here. Twenty, thirty, And essentially, we're just copying all these. Build out a bunch of new cells. So just make sure. Well, these are the same. I'm keeping the pram grid the same for each one. These the stratified is going to be the same. Pipeline, right? Just make sure you change that to CVDTC for that one, and you need to change the name, right? So I'll just say pipe final DTC like that, and do that again. Now this is pretty tedious, I apologize, but you get to see a little bit behind the scenes, right? Encoding now it says for two hours, which is fun on here. So that means this video is well over two hours already. So I do hope you guys are learning stuff with that. Okay, neighbors, classifier, Build out our pram grid, which this is gonna actually be different this time. So we're gonna put n neighbors, and then I don't know, we'll go like three, five, seven, nine, eleven, right? Mac, and then we're gonna do our weights in here, weights. You can do uniform or you can do distance. Then we have our algorithm. This has so many on here. I don't even think I covered them all on my other one, other video talking about this, but we can do like auto, ball, tree. KD, tree, and then brutes, and our p value. So 
one, two. And I need to put commas here at the end for all these. Not a K, just twice. Okay. Put this over here. Put our pipeline and we'll we'll double check make sure there's no issues at the end two but it's uh it's a process i think we're halfway done with this now which isn't bad Let's see. plus s and v c like this this param grade is actually going to be easier Really not much. We have like a C value. Which is a lot of C values. It's like 100, 10, 1.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.01. We'll do like 0, 0 or something like that. It doesn't really matter. Do one more. Zero one. And then we'll put our kernel. Okay. And then different kernels. Linear. Poly. RBF. And then sigmoid. Sigmoid like that. We have our commas, cool. Then we'll do our cross validation grid search. SVC, okay. Type final. Let's see. We have our logistic regression next. Which we ran out of code, so we're going to build out a lot more codes over here. LR equals logistic regression. Put that in over here. Build out our pram grid, which I'm just going to put C values. There. Okay. And just put CV LR. Estimator is LR. And there. Make our pipelines. Pipe final LR. Copy that. CV LR. Like that. And then lastly, our naive bias, so GNB, that's the only one I haven't covered on the channel yet. This was actually my first time using this model over here. It's a lot more I got to research on that side of things, right? And then do our param grid. This is actually an interesting one. It's called bar smoothing. And our values are like, they're crazy small. I'm just literally going to copy these over so I don't make a mistake on it. Just copy it from my source code. Yeah, they're very small. Okay. Almost done, guys. I know, that, again, super tedious. But it will be well worth it once this is done, right? You're going to be done with your first machine learning model, not model, but like first project. And um, it'll be good. Right. So let's grab that. Hit final GMB. A. Over here. 
Let's get those best parameters, which I've actually been forgetting to put that over here on everything. So you can see like my last one is decision tree. Let's put those over here too. All right, CV, K, and N over here. Make sure we do that for the SVC and logistic regression too. So put that there, put that there. Copy. And um, we have to do that for logistic still. VLR. Okay. And um, put that over here for GNB. That's so now that we have all this in here, I'm just going to run all. And again, this will take some time. So I'm going to pause the video and I will be back uh, once this is done. So just go over here and click run all. Okay. So we are back and um, it actually performed pretty well. So let's go through some of these different results and take a look. So first we have over here, the random forest classifier. We ended up getting 0 0.827. So it worked over here. Decision tree classifier, which doesn't look like I actually, um, actually did over here, right? 0 0.815 KNN, uh, which got 0 0.803. Then over here, um, our support vector at 0 0.799, our logistic regression which it looks like we actually got some errors and in increased number of iterations, scale of data. Um, so this will be something maybe to take a look at a little bit later, uh, but this got 0 0.804 out the C value 0, 01. And then our Gaussian over here, 0 0.779. So now we can pretty much export some of this data and see how well everything performed. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is set our predictions and I'm also gonna build out a few new things over here. So I'm gonna do one and then just like copy it over. So we can do Y pred for like prediction equals and then we're just gonna do each of the different pipelines, right? So like the first pipeline we had over here, if we go over here to copy it, right? Um, pipe final, I think it's what, RFC. So just go down over here, right? equals pipe and then just do dot predict and we'll put X test right and then we'll just do this for all of our pipelines we'll just change this up right five six and we'll have like two three four five and then also six over here and then they're just the different names so I hope I have all these correct we'll just say like DTC K N N S V C L R and then G N B, right? So those are going to be all of our predictions. So just run that for a second. Actually, it might take a little bit longer than I thought. And then um, we have to build our submission. So we'll say submission equals PD dot data frame, right? And then we're gonna first gonna set our passenger ID, passenger ID, it's gonna be test DF, passenger ID, like that, put a comma, and then survived, put that there. I'll say Y prediction like that. And I think we're gonna just do this for all of our other submissions, right? So four, five, six, right? So two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, and six, and also six. And the reason why we're doing that is we can have up to 10 submissions per day. Okay, and then lastly, we're gonna do this to CSV. So submission dot to CSV. And then 
essentially what we're gonna do is copy this working folder over here. So just copy that here, right? So Kaggle slash working, put this in single quotes. And then what I'm gonna just name this as like, oops, we have another quote there. Should only be one. There we go. So I'll just say this is submission one. We'll say the date, we'll say like, yeah. 9.12, and then I'll just say .csv. Here, what I'm gonna do instead is 9.12 underscore one, just so I know for the date and then for things like that. And then same thing, right? So actually one other thing I need to do too before I forget is I need to say index equals false. So index equals false, okay? And then we'll just start copying these over. So two, three, four, five, and six. Two, three, four, five, and also six. All right. Moment of truth. And look at that. We have all of our submissions over here. So I'm just gonna download these real quick. So just go over to more actions, download, right? Six, one, two, five, four, three, download, right? And I'm just gonna name this Titanic WIP. We'll do like 912, just so I know like this is the date on this one. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to Kaggle again. All right, and we're gonna go to Titanic. So now I'm gonna go over to submit predictions. So it says you have nine submissions remaining today, so resets in 12 hours. So what I'm gonna go to do is our downloads over here. We're gonna copy these six over here, just drag that in. Oops, we need to do that again. So you're gonna have to go over one at a time. So we're gonna start off with submission one, throw that in here, right? Submit, let's see how this one performed. So this first one got 0 0.75598. So not the best. So we can submit prediction over here again. So this time we're gonna submit number two. Let's see how this one performs. So 0 0.763, a little bit better performance on that one. We can go over here to number three. Submit this. 0 0.73, so got a little bit worse. Then we go over here to submission four. Zero point seven six six five five. So this has been our best one so far for this one. We have two more though to check out. So we'll go over here, submission five. Seven, six, and then we'll submit one more, which is our last one. And we'll see how this one performs also. So this was our best one, submission six. We got 0 0.7751 in this instance. Now, my best score in general was 7822, and this was something I submitted yesterday. I had a little bit other tweaks to the code, which was funny because this one actually had a few errors, uh, but it performed a little bit better. Um, but overall, you can see how this works, right? I'm just going back over here. There are different submissions, right? Submission one, two, three, four, five, six, the CSV. And actually our best one in this case, right, was this naive box, which performed actually the worst surprisingly on our training data, but performed best on our testing data set. If you made it this far, congrats. You finished this Kaggle project and possibly your first machine learning project. Now this video was a beast to make, right? Between uh, setting up all the code and also recording as well as editing associated with it. 100% for free, but all I ask is if you guys did enjoy this video and you learned something new, please subscribe to the channel. 
I also do have a Twitter account, which I'm super active posting on. So if you want to check that out, also it is down below in the description. I have so many other machine learning videos. In fact, I have a full video on scikit-learn over here, not full video, but a full playlist. And um, I reinforce all the different concepts that were taught throughout this video.